everyone, another Pilates workout for you today. Optional prop, pair of hand weights, your tins of beans, what you will. If you don't have anything like that handy or you don't want to for whatever reason, just keeping your arms really nice and relaxed and working with your own body weight is a great way to work on your shoulder alignment. So we're going to start lying down today. So just finding that nice balanced position of your spine, nice heavy weight of your head, heavy weight of your rib cage, heavy weight of your pelvis and planting those feet down into the floor. So just going to place both of your hands just below your belly button and start with some nice deep diaphragmatic breaths here. So we're going to take a big belly breath in. And then exhale just to find those abdominal muscles reconnecting. On your next in breath, you can also think of flooding that breath to the back of your ribs. And then relaxing, feeling those ribs just contract slightly. Two more. If you like, you can also now think about that little movement of your breastbone. Rocking back on your inhale, forward on your exhale. And then one more nice deep breath. And then exhaling to let all of that go. We're going to reach your fingertips up towards the ceiling and just come into a few of our nice little shoulder shrugs. So we're widening your shoulder blades like you're opening a pair of elevator doors. And then to lower, just relax your shoulders. So we're just going to allow them to come back down rather than thinking of squeezing or dropping them too violently. And then we're just going to take that into a little side to side rock. So just allowing your head to roll with that movement of your rib cage. Just inviting a little bit of movement into your thoracic spine. And then we add a little rotation of your arm. Just like a little sort of swivel of a key in a lock, if you will. And then from here, we're going to bring your arms down into, sorry, just moving my weights out of the way, into a little W stretch. So I've got quite mobile shoulders, so my hands drop back to the floor. If your hands need to be a little bit further forward, that's absolutely fine. So we basically just want to come to a position where you can feel a good stretch, widening across your collarbone and just creating that lovely length through your upper body. So from here, I'm going to give you the option of grabbing your weights and we're going to come back into that W stretch. Your weights will obviously make this a little bit more intense. If it's feeling like it's too much, you can just pop them down for the series, then maybe just bring them back in later. So from that W shape, we're just going to slide your elbows up slightly so that they're just below your shoulders. We're going to inhale here, and then as we exhale, we're going to wrap underneath your armpits to hover those elbows just slightly forward of your shoulders, and then relaxing back down. So we're exhaling to have that little lift forward, and then inhaling to lower. So we want to feel that gentle connection of those rotator cuff muscles behind your shoulder blades. Exhaling to have that little hover, and then inhale to lower. I repeat, if this is too much with the weights, you're welcome to just use your own body weight for these. On our next one, we hover those elbows and then we're coming into a little puppet movement. So a little flip down and up. I'm not sure why, but this particular movement always makes me think of MC Hammer. Did he do something like this? Maybe. Let me know in the comments below. Make a video if you like. Why not all get technical? Three more here, and two, and then we're going to take that into a little combination. So we lower, exhale, lift, inhale, tip, exhale, back, relaxing down, taking up from under your shoulders, tipping forward and back, twice more here, tipping forward and back, and then last one. Relax those arms down and just let those shoulders release for a moment. 
So we're going to bring your feet all the way in together now. And we're going to bring your arms into your tiger tree position. So if you are a ballet of the ballet persuasion, it's like your first position here. If you like, you can extend your wrists slightly, like you're holding on to a ball. So at the studio, we'll quite often do this holding on to little weighted balls just to keep that functional position of your hands. I don't have those at home, so hand weights we'll have to do for today. So from here on your inhale, we're going to open both your arms and your legs, and then exhale to think of zipping everything back into the center. So just coming into a little open and close. You're gonna think of keeping your two glasses of bubbly balanced on each hip bone or insert beverage of choice here and if you like you can imagine that you've got a little string running between your wrist and your thigh bones so these movements are quite small probably just about to your shoulders distance smaller if you're feeling like you're needing to move your pelvis to make this movement happen let's just do this three more times this movement often reminds me of those little Klingon koalas that you used to get in gift shops in Australia back in the day. Often they had the little hats with the corks. What do you call those? Akubas? Two more here. We had a lovely neighbour from Sydney who used to always bring us those when she went to visit her family. So this time we're going to open opposite arm and leg. So we're just inviting a little bit of work for those obliques finding how those oblique muscles connect in with your shoulders and also with your inner thigh muscles. You're going to really relax your legs as much as you can to make them as heavy as possible. Again, you may find that you have a little bit of movement on one side if you're slightly unstable. If that's the case for you, just modify that to make the movement a little bit smaller. And now from here, we're going to go same arm, same leg. So this is a little bit of a um, counterintuitive sort of movement. So it might take a little bit of organizing in your brain. But this is generally not how we walk. I say generally, but you know, there are some camel walkers out there. Just gently waking up that connection into your obliques. And then we're just going to bring our feet hips distance apart once more. And we're going to lift opposite arm to leg and then lower. So let's flex our feet just so we can really encourage the back of the leg to stay nice and active. A little push into your supporting heel is just going to gently wake up that connection from your glutes to your hamstrings. As we're going for that little tip up and back with your arm, we're making sure the tops of your shoulders, your upper traps are just chilling out. So we're just moving from that ball joint of your shoulders. And then again, same arm, same leg. Reset brain for a moment. This to me feels very weird. As we're lifting that leg, we need to make sure we're keeping that same distance between your rib cage and your hip. Quite often people will want to sort of hike the hip in order to lift the leg. Instead, we want to think of a little wrap, a little spiral from underneath that thigh bone to bring that leg back up. Let's just do that once more on each side. Alrighty, relaxing your toes to the floor. We're going to bring your weights all the way in together. If you like, you can interlace your fingers around them just so you have a little bit more stability. And then moving from your shoulders, we're going to breathe out to bring your arms back and then breathe in to lower down. So this range of motion will depend on how this is feeling in your shoulders. Using that exhalation to move your arms back is going to encourage your ribs just to stay connected. So we're tipping from that ball joint of your shoulder. Keeping those elbows nice and wide is going to help us to keep those upper traps just chilling out here. 
We're just going to do that twice more. And then from here, changing your breath. So this time we inhale to tip back. As we exhale, your armpits draw down to bring you into an abdominal push. And then inhale to lower. Arms draw us forward. And then releasing. So finding that connection through those obliques into those lats. Four more here. If this bothers anyone's neck, just continue with your head on the floor. Two more of these. And then from here, we have a little fold to your hairline and then pressing away. Some gyms call this exercise skull crushes. I'm begging you, do not crush your skull. So the weights I'm using are only a kilo. You could choose to use up to about two kgs, depending on, of course, what you have available. You probably don't want to go too much heavier than that. So it's more important to keep that focus on our alignment rather than going for the burn with these little warm-up exercises here. Just two more of these. And then from here, bringing those weights all the way down. Just giving your shoulders a little bit of a release. We're going to bring your attention to your lower body. So we're going to go for a little tuck of your hips. Exhaling to roll back and then inhaling to lengthen forward. Thinking of a nice scoop of your belly and a little release of those sit bones. Three more of these. Just two more. And then the last one. And then we take that to our little side to side. So if your clock face image works for you, we're going three to nine. Or you can imagine that little seesaw that runs across those hip bones. Just one more on each side here, team. And then from here, as we drop your left hip, we're going to reach your right thigh bone forward, and then we reverse. So we're moving that into a little sort of sachet movement, finding that nice reach and lengthen from side to side. Just balancing yourselves out so that you've done the same number on each side. And then from here, we're going to extend your left leg and just go for a little push forward of that right thigh bone. Just roll that hip to the ceiling and then relax and melt back down. So you can let your long leg turn out as you come into that little roll up. So push into that heel, connect into that sit bone. Exhale, push to roll and then inhale to relax and roll. Three more here. Connecting into that heel. And then the last one. Relaxing that hip all the way down. Just stretch that leg out. Take a moment just to compare your two sides. You might feel a little bit skew with in some way or the other. Just take a moment to acknowledge for yourself what that is. So I feel like I'm on a little bit of a lean over to my left now and my right leg has got a lot longer. And then we will do that same thing on your other side. So finding a good flex of that underneath foot and we push into your left heel to rotate and then relax back down. Push and glide open and then release. So really thinking of finding that nice rotation in your hips. Four more here. Pushing to glide open. We're just doing this twice more. All right, bringing your feet to stand under your hips once again, just adjusting my sock. Take your cushion away 
and in fact if you like let's just pop that cushion in between your inner thighs for now so we can just keep that little bit of activation going so we're going to come into a trusty spine curl so we're going to exhale to tuck your tail under and we roll up through your spine inhale at the top and then exhale to release back down so we're doing four of these and i'm going to encourage you to move at the pace that feels appropriate for your body making sure whichever pace you're moving at that we're keeping those abdominals connecting and we're starting to roll down from that roll of your breastbone. I'm just going to do one more of these. And then resting at the bottom. Now we're going to combine this movement with that sachet that we were doing before. So remember how it felt to have that little squeeze of your cushion and then we'll move it out of your way. So we're going to glide that right thigh bone forward, let that lift your pelvis and then we drop the right tip and left tip. So we go left, right, left, and right. It's a little rainbow arc of your pelvis, if you will. Pulling forward and away. Reaching that thigh bone forward. We're going to do one more of these on each side, lengthening up and over the rainbow. And then last one here. Relaxing all the way down, just have a little moment to hug your knees in towards you. And we'll just take a little bit of rock and roll from side to side. Alrighty, placing one foot, then the other foot back down to the floor. Interlacing your hands behind your head, we exhale to come forward to an abdominal curl. And then inhale to release. Melting your breastbone forward and then lengthening to lower. So we're finding that scoop of those abs to bring you up here. Apple under your chin and then lengthening back down. We have four more. Exhaling to melt that breastbone forward. We do two more here. On our next one, holding up at the top and then we tuck just to have a little lift of your hips. And then lower back down. Mini spine curl here. So we're scooping those sit bones together, drawing those deep abdominal muscles in. Exhale to lengthen up and then inhale to lengthen down. Three more here. And two. Holding up at the top. And we have a little reach forward of your right thigh bone to sink your left in and then come back through the center. So we're repeating that little sachet movement and that abdominal curl, inviting a little bit more activity for those oblique muscles. Two more here. Last one, roll your hips down, roll your head down, breath in, exhale, rolling up into that ab curl, and we reach across to your oblique twist and find center. Up and across, coming back in, lifting up and over, exhale across and come back, three more here and two. From here adding that little fold in with one leg, standing on that foot, up and across and stand on it, fold and reach and lower, exhale, inhale, four more Exhale across and inhale, stand on it. Two more. Option to repeat here. Otherwise, we hover, extend your opposite foot and come into our crisscross. Reaching up and over. Sinking those abs as we go. Reaching across and across. Four more here. And three. Two more. Last one, one foot at a time comes back to the floor, bring those feet together, bring your cushion back under your head, we're going to reach those arms to a nice T-shape, inhale, we're going to roll your knees one way, head the other way, and then exhale, use those obliques to feed your legs back into the centre, other side. Finding that nice roll up and across, inhaling to tip 
exhale then let those obliques guide you back in just moving within the range of motion that's working for you today and then we're going to come into a little bit of a combination so we're going to tip your knees towards your screen let your back arm circle up and overhead to come forward reverse that arm and then reverse your legs tipping the other way we go legs arm arm legs tipping legs up and over with your arm circling back and coming back in finding that nice fluid movement here nurturing your spine going up and across up and over Tipping over, reaching forward. Let's just do that once more on each side. And then coming all the way over to your side to do some nice sideline work. I may just need to readjust my position as well so you can see me. Hold that thought while I drink some coffee. Okay, okay, so we will have just one of your hand weights ready. We'll use that in a minute. So you're welcome to uh, either grab a second cushion or do a double number, finding that uh, 90 degree angle if that feels comfortable for you. Or if you prefer, you can go a cushion between your ear and your shoulder. So just a little bit of a loosen up for that shoulder. No weight in your hand to start with. We're just gonna do that little slide out and in with your arm that we were doing on our backs to begin. So we're just encouraging that little bit of that glide of that shoulder blade across your rib cage. Just a couple more of those. And then we just go for a little turn in and out. So again, just swiveling from that ball joint in your shoulder. You can exaggerate that end movement with your hands slightly if that's feeling good. Feels quite nice to get a little bit of a stretch through those muscles in the front of your forearm, particularly if you've been doing more computer work than usual in lockdown. And then last one of these. And then we're just going to paint a little Easter egg, half an Easter egg. So we're just drawing a little half circle palm facing up. And then just allow your arm to swivel, your hand to swivel with your arm. Top of your shoulder is just going to stay nice and calm and the heavier the more relaxed you can make this arm the more space we're going to create in that shoulder capsule which is a good thing all right relax that arm down just give that shoulder a little bit of a zhuzh and then we're going to grab hold of your weight so we're going to come into a little sort of robot arm position. Your elbow slightly away from your body. Make sure, I've got baggy clothes on today, but you have a little, you can't see my mouse hole. I promise you I've got a mouse hole. There it is. So we're going to come into a little rotator cuff open and close here. Exhaling to lift, inhaling to lower. So we want to think of this movement coming from the back of your shoulder. Your arm will stay slightly forward of your body. We do two more of these. And then we open and we're gliding out and folding in. So that arm is staying on that same plane, reaching away and then coming back. Exhaling and inhaling. Four more. Long through the fingers. And then we're going to put those two movements together. So we close the door, open the door, glide out, and in. Close, and open. Reach away, fold in. Closing, and opening, stretching out, and in. Calm through the top of that shoulder. Three more sets here. Last one. From here, 
from Paint Down, Palm Faces 4, coming up. We lower and we lift. Exhale down, inhale stretch. We lower, palm faces forward. We go four and reach away and three. Palm forward, two more here. Last one. Stretch your legs out to straight. From here, we come forward and we lift. A little bit of a challenge for our obliques as well as our shoulders. Coming down and up for four and three and two. Last one. Bring that arm all the way down. You can place your weight down for a moment and just give that shoulder a little bit of a wriggle. So from here, your choice, if you'd like a little bit of an extra challenge, you can place that weight behind your top knee and just give that a little bit of a squeeze. So we're gonna glide your top hip away from your shoulder. And then from here, we're just lengthening that thigh bone slightly further back, letting that hip tip forward, and then coming back to that start position. So just going into our hip extension here. Reaching back and coming forward. Three more of these. Pushing back. And then hold that leg back there and we squeeze into that weight for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Hold that squeeze. We drop that heel towards the floor and we lift. So we're keeping your knee still, just rotating that thigh bone to allow that heel to drop. Three more of these. And two. And then from here, we keep your heel still and we lift your thigh bone into a little extended plan. We lift and lower, rotating from that hip. Check that we're keeping that same distance between your rib cage and your pelvis. Two more of these. And then we alternate. We go foot and lower and knee and lower, and foot, and lower, and knee, and lower, and foot, and lower, and knee, and lower, and foot, and knee. We go four, and three, and two, last set. Bring that leg all the way back in. You can take that weight away for a moment and just give that hip a little bit of attention. And then we're gonna push your legs all the way out to straight. So heels are going to be, feet are gonna be flexed. Hand can either be on the floor or you can try bringing that hand to your waist if you'd like a little extra challenge. And then we're going to lengthen and lift both legs and lower. So imagining those legs are gonna get so long that they have no option but to float up. Pressing away and then coming back. Three more. Two more here. Holding those legs at the top, stretching your toes, and we draw a little circle with both of your legs, keeping your pelvis still for four and three and two, and we reverse back in the round for seven, six, five, four three, two, hold those legs long and we go for a nice long scissor to walk and we switch. My hand's coming down, we switch and we switch. So we want to think of keeping both of your legs on those exact same planes. And we go four and three and two. Last one. Lengthen those legs up a sniff and then relax them all the way down and just give that glute a little bit of love once more and we'll come and do that much on the other side. So just have your weight handy, we won't need that straight away. 
So finding our little mouse hole, that shoulder's reaching away, we're gonna reach that palm to face forward and just come into those nice little glides of that shoulder. So it's like someone's pulling your hand to create that little bit of space in between your shoulder blades. And then we roll forward and back. Just getting that nice pivot in that shoulder socket. And then we're just going for that little half an inch jog. So tipping from that shoulder joint. Just two more of these. And then relaxing that arm, just giving that shoulder a little bit of a shimmy out. Finding your weight and coming into our rotator cuff series. So we open and close. Quite often I'll get people to do a little comparison between sides with that scaption exercise, that preparation that we were just doing. And it can be amazing what a difference just doing those few little movements can make in terms of the way your shoulders are functioning. And in fact, not just your shoulders, because everything's connected. Sometimes you might feel like uh, your hips release a little, your upper back, your neck. True story. Three more of these. And then we open and we glide out and in. Four more here. And then we combine. We close and we open. Close, reach away and in. Just letting your breath flow here. We are working against gravity, so that weight can feel quite heavy. If that's you, don't stress about it. That's normal. And then we lower and come just to your shoulder height. So your arm is staying slightly forward of your shoulder, just so we're not gonna allow your shoulder blades to squeeze together. Just two more. Last one. And then stretch leggies out, and we close, and we open. Sit bones will just come slightly forward without tucking your pelvis as we do this. Two more. And then last one. Bring that all the way down, just give that shoulder a little bit of a release. And then we're gonna bring those legs to that 90 degree angle. If you did so on your first side, your weight, is going behind your top knee. And we just come into that little pull back and then come back in. So your sit bone is going to move closer to your thigh bone as we come into this little bit of hip extension. So we're just doing four more of these. Exhaling back, inhaling, just back to that start position. And then holding that leg in that slight hip extension, we squeeze for seven, six, five, four, three, two. Hold that squeeze and we dip that heel down and up. We dip and lift. So we're seeing if we can keep that knee in that same position as we rotate that heel down. Doesn't have to go all the way to the floor, just let it go where it goes. And then this time your lower leg stays still and your thigh bone lifts and lowers. Keeping that leg as far behind you as you can without going into extension of your spine. So we're really thinking of opening through the front of your hip 
as well as finding that bit of work for your glutes and those deep rotator muscles. And then we alternate, so we dip heel and lift and then and lift and heel. Three more. Two. And last one. Bring that leg in, take that weight away, and then lengthening your legs all the way out to the straight. And then I'm going to scoop down so you can see me. We lift and we lower. Reaching away. Exhaling up. If you chose to have your hand up on your first side, you can bring that up there once more. Just check that your shoulder isn't climbing up towards your ear. Two more. And then from here, stretching all toes. And we circle for seven, six, five, four, three, two, reverse, up for seven, six, five, four, three, two, grow a little longer, bring that hand to the floor, and we have that nice little scissor. Big walk here. Six, and five, and four, three, two, last set. Bring those legs up a sniff, lower down, and just give that glute a little bit of attention one more time. All right, let's come and do a little bit of our prone extension work. Um, well, we use our weights. Let's keep those on standby. So we're gonna have your um, head onto your cushion, just so you don't feel like you're gonna squash your face into the floor. Just have your weights either side of your hips. So you're gonna have your head facing down, just listen to my instructions, but I'm just gonna keep my head turned towards the camera so I can pick up my voice. So we're gonna bring your arms to relax down beside you. Lift your belly away from the floor, little tuck of your tail, and we're gonna keep your shoulders rolling down to start with. So from here, we're just gonna think of picking up your arms from your triceps, from the backs of your arms, and then relaxing them back down. So we're just going to do a few of these, just thinking about finding that activation from your triceps. So we've got to really feel those guys switch on and then switch off. So let's just do that twice more. And then from here, opening your shoulders your head is still looking down. We're going to imagine somebody pulling your fingertips and pulling your breastbone to bring you into a little extension, a little dart, and then relaxing down. Long fingertips, long through the crown of your head, and then releasing back down. We will do that twice more, reaching out through those fingers, sit bones draw together, and then lengthen back down. Last one, reaching long and away. From here, find your weights, take them into your hands, and we have a little pulse up for seven, six, five, four, three, two. Little circle of those arms up and around. Keep those shoulders wide, keep that tailbone dropping, palm space in, we hug the midline in for seven, six, five, four, three, Two circling here. We go up for seven, six, five, along through those shoulders, reverse those circles. We go up and up, reaching long and away for four, three, two, lengthen a little higher, relax yourselves all the way down, hang by your shoulders, and then come and sit yourselves back into your child's pose. So reach your arms forward. Coming back onto your tummies one more time. So today we're going to bring your feet a little bit wider. I don't know if you can see my feet. There they are. 
So slightly wider, about to the width of your shoulders. Find that lift of your belly away from the floor. Little drop of your tail. And then we're going to come into a little squeeze together of your heels. So we're going to think of narrowing your sit bones. And then we just hover those thigh bones away from the floor without changing your lower back. Engaging your hamstrings. And then release. So we squeeze, lift. And lower. Exhale, hover. And inhale to release. Squeezing to lift. And then releasing. Three more here. And two. Hold this next hover of those legs. And then from there, we open. And come back in. Lengthening. And then folding. Stretching away. Flex to fold back in. Long through those legs. We go three more here. And two. And last one, lift those heels a sniff more and then relax them all the way down. Relax your legs all the way down, come back into your child's pose once more. So just bring your hips back to your heels. Nice deep breaths into your upper body. And then when you're ready, using your exhalation to peel yourselves all the way up through your spines once more. We're going to come and do a little bit of your four-point healing. So I'm just going to push my props out of my way. Um, um, um. Alrighty, folks. So we're going to bring your hands slightly forward of your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Think of a little soft bend in those elbows. So it's like we're trying to pull the floor apart here. So we're going to start with a little tuck under of your tail. So we're peeling through into your angry cat shape. And then we're going to inhale to lift your tailbone and articulate through your spine to come into your extension. So we're going to exhale, tuck your tail under, peel through your spine. And then inhale to lift your tailbone and then lengthen out and away. Just continue this nice rolling movement through your spine. So we want to see how much space we can eke out in between your vertebrae. Widening your shoulders in your cat stretch. And then just coming to pause in the center. Have a little lift of your heel that's closest to your screen. And then we're just going for a little tail wag today. So we're just going for a pivot on that knee. Bringing a little bit of lateral flexion into your spine. A nice moving stretch, depending on how long your feet are, you may have to adjust your flex of your foot as you toss over your other one. Just one more on each side. And then we're going to bring that foot down, lift your opposite heel and same thing. Keeping that little soft bend going in those elbows. Just one more each way. And then pause in the center, lower that leg. Just come back into your child's pose to come off those wrists for a moment. So you can give them a little bit of a a little bit of a shake and shimmy. We're going to find one of your weights and come back into that four-point kneeling position. I should have said earlier, if anyone is not comfortable in four-point kneeling, you can try doing this on your elbows. Uh, or for this next series, you may like to just do this standing. So we're just going to be doing a little bit of tricep work. The benefit of doing it in four-point kneeling is because we have that hand in the floor that's helping to connect us through that opposite side of your body. So I'm grabbing a weight. So we're going to start with your knuckles down to the floor and we're just going for a little pull and then stretch. So just keeping that shoulder nice and wide. We go four more. And three. And two. Holding that elbow back there, we have a little kickback and then release. Lengthening those triceps. Keeping that shoulder away from your ear. We go two more. 
holding that arm extended, we lower that shape and we lift to just above that shoulder height. We dip and then pick up from the back of the arm. We go four more like this. Two more here. Holding that arm up at the height of your hip, we have a little circle there. And then we reverse your circles. Bring that arm back down. If you need to, have a little breather for those wrists. Otherwise, grabbing your weight in your other hand, tipping around so you can see me. And we go for that little rev of your engine. So we wanna make sure your standing elbow is facing in towards your center line rather than locking forward. I just had to check mine, my elbows like to lock. Three more here. And two. And then from here we have that little kickback. Keep thinking about the crown of your head reaching forward. We still have the proverbial Pilates apple underneath your chin. Three more here. Holding that extension, we tap down and lift. As that arm comes up, we're staying wide through your shoulder blade rather than letting it crunch into your midline. Holding that arm up and we circle. Check that your shoulder blade on your supporting arm is still wide rather than crunching into your midline. And then we reverse those circles here. Lift that arm a centimeter higher, relax it all the way down, bring your hands together and just come into our little tricep stretch. So you can bring your hands behind your head, you can even come and give yourself a little pat on the back if that helps you to get a slightly deeper stretch through those shoulders. And then reaching those arms forward to come to your four point kneeling once more. So your choice here, you can do this uh, standing up against a wall. Again, if you're not comfortable with this much pressure in your wrist, sink bench is good for this if you're able to see your computer from your sink bench. Otherwise, stay here with me. So we're going to fold for those elbows to dip all the way down to the floor and then push the floor away. So we want to really move in the fullest range of motion that we can achieve here. As we're coming up, we're pushing evenly through both wrists. So we're also just getting that nice flexion in the fronts of our hips. We're doing two more of these. And then from here, we come down to just hovering above the floor and then we lower and just come up a fraction. We go down and then push and hover, keeping that weight into your wrists. Make sure you don't drop your head. We go four, just up a centimeter. And two. From here, we go for a little hinge back. Pick your hands up off the floor. Come forward and then lengthen. Hinge, pick up, put down and straighten. So yes, we are asking a bit of work for your hamstrings to keep you in that hovering position here. We go four. Not mumbo hams. And three. Hover, place them down. Two more here. Pick up, put it down. Last one. Alrighty, from here, tuck your toes under. Come into your little squat position. So you can have your cushion under your heels here if this isn't feeling comfortable for you. And we're gonna drop your heels and have a little hang forward. See if you have a little shake from side to side. Yes and no, no and yes. Scooping your belly to tuck under and then rolling all the way up through your spines. You're going to have to be very antisocial here. You probably won't be able to see my face. So we're going to bring your legs quite wide. So we're going to do a nice little functional squat here. So you're going to bring your hands to the fronts of your hips. So we're going to hinge on those hips to come back and then push up through your heels to lift. So we want to think of coming into that little forward pitch. So this is definitely a squat rather than a plie for those of you of the ballet persuasion. So we're thinking of connecting into your heels to bring you up, lowering down, and then driving up through both heels to lift. We're going to 
do four more of this. I'm gonna inhale to lower and then exhale to lengthen and lift. Just twice more. And then we're gonna come back down into that squat and we just come up an inch and we lower an inch. Staying in that little forward pitch. So this helps us to kick into the glutes, the backs of the legs, rather than the fronts. The fronts of your legs, your quads, we're working a little here, but we want this to be more about your glutes and your hamstrings. Two more of these. And then last one. Come down a little bit deeper for me, folks. And then see if you can lift those heels and lower. Staying in that little forward pitch. Feeling up and down. As you peel up, we want to feel those hamstrings kick in just a little bit more. Lowering those heels, three more. And then lower, two more here. Lucky last one. Push into those heels to come up one more time. And then just toe heel your feet back, feet, your feet back underneath your hips. Alrighty folks, big breath in and up. And then exhale to let those arms go. Three more here, breathing in. And then releasing, twice more. Letting it go. Last one. Just relax those arms all the way down and we will leave that there. If you're feeling a little bit tight through your quads, through your lower body, I put a video on YouTube yesterday uh, of a really nice lower body release, incorporating some different bits and pieces from different things I've learned from around the place over the years. So I recommend that you have a look at that. Uh, my next video, I think I'm going to do another preggy lattes number. So the last few ones I've done have not really been that appropriate for pregnancy. So we might have a look and do one of those next, followed by a bath. We'll see. Have a lovely afternoon, folks, and I will hopefully see you again fairly soon. Bye.